we have a crisis in the world, tremendous crisis, and also crisis in our consciousness, in us. I see the urgency of change, radical revolution, mutation in the mind. I see it. It is necessary. There is complete quietness of the mind, and that which is silent has vast space. Only then that which is nameless comes into being. This is Urgency of Change, the Krishnamurti podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 40 of Urgency of Change. This week's podcast is Krishnamurti in conversation with Alan Norday, entitled A Mind That Is Not Empty Cannot Find Truth. Next week features a conversation with Donald Ingram Smith in which they ask what living is actually. This is a podcast from Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. Please see our official YouTube channel for hundreds of video and audio recordings of full talks and carefully chosen extracts. We are a non-profit charity and rely on your support to continue to preserve and make available Krishnamurti's work. If you enjoy our podcast, please consider leaving a review. Alan Norday was Krishnamurti's private secretary in the 1960s. He met Krishnamurti in 1963 whilst a music lecturer and concert pianist. He gave up his teaching and performing in 1964 to work with Krishnamurti full-time. Fluent in several languages, he was very helpful at international gatherings and in attracting younger audiences to Krishnamurti's talks at a time of cultural change in the West. This conversation between Krishnamurti and Norday was recorded in Malibu in 1972. Norde begins by asking, are the various scriptures of India and the Middle East similar to, or in contradiction, to your teaching? Krishnamurti goes on to ask, can thought end right through one's consciousness? Must thought not end for something new to be observed? How does the mind look at itself? Does it look as an observer different from the observed, or without the observer and therefore there is only the observed. Can consciousness empty itself of its content? What has happened to the mind that has discarded the weight of becoming, of tradition, myth, gurus and authority? A mind that has no space can never find truth. When you are nothing, you love. There is a movement in silence that has no beginning and no end a movement that is always new. Inquiry is different from effort, from seeking, from achievement. So if we may, I'd like us to speak today about the Upanishads. I know this isn't something you usually speak about. But many people have asked certain questions. For the simple reason, sir, I haven't read them. Yes, sir. Many people have asked questions about them, and if you don't mind, perhaps without saying that this is the authority of the Upanishads, perhaps we could just examine a few statements which come into the Upanishads and which have, which have been the, the, the most important thing in the lives of countless, countless millions of people through the centuries. The Upanishads say, sir, that there is only one reality, that this reality, whether we call it God or Brahman or whatever, is all there is, that the world is illusory as an independent reality, but real as consciousness, as Brahman. And they say also, we are essentially that Brahman, part of that Brahman. And all the great sages of India, all the great teachers of India, have in a way been a commentary, a historic commentary through the centuries on the Upanishads. And if one looks at all the great teachings of all the great sages of India, there's, there's this unity in them. You mean you're saying they've based their 
the background of their teaching is the Upanishad. They haven't always taught because they were conditioned no, by the Upanishads, no, no, but no. in some instances they didn't even know the Upanishads, and when they started teaching, they were confronted, of course, by all the Orthodox Brahmins whom we know, and these Brahmins said, but you are saying the same as the Upanishads. And it did seem to emerge time and again that they were saying the same as the Upanishads. Even if they didn't know the Upanishads, they finally were saying the same thing, that there is beyond the mind, beyond thought, beyond the ego, a reality which, to use a Christian term, is God in the heart of man. And that this is the only reality there really is. Then they've also said that this is pure consciousness. They've also said that the world of form and names and time is illusion. They've also said the human ego is illusion. They've all come back to saying there is only one reality, and that is God, and that is consciousness. And we can know that within our hearts. And it can only be known when the ego is silent. And so one gets notions of silence, one gets notions of space, one gets notions of timelessness, and the illusory nature of form and space and the, the universe which to us seems so tangible. W would it be possible at all to speak about that, sir? Yes, sir. So, what is the question? The question is, is this essentially different from what you're saying? You're asking, sir, aren't you, whether what the Upanishads, the Gita, the various scriptures, scriptures of India and the Middle East, and the Middle East, the Sufis and yes. all that, yes. are they? similar to your teaching. Is that what you're saying? Or are they in contradiction? Are they in teaching? contradiction, similar, and so on? Yes. First of all, I haven't read any of them. Secondly, are we approaching this from a point of view of authority in the sense because of their ancient uh, of their ancient established traditional assertions and so they have become extraordinarily authoritarian and accepted and revered? Or are we looking at it from two people? One, who has read these things and doesn't accept them as final authority, but merely is willing to investigate explore the truth of their assertions in relationship to what is being said by K. Yes. So we both of us are examining. Yes. You on your side, knowing, having read all the various scriptures, perhaps deeply, Quite a few of them, not all. Mm, most of them. Most of the important ones. Most of the important ones. And I, and this. and K, not having read them, and is willing to explore together this whole question of reality. Thank you, sir. Would be very Which grateful. is 
we move away from every form of concept. Whether it is the ancient concept of the Upanishads, the Vedas, the Gita and the various sacred literatures of the world, which are really formulas, Mm -hmm. concepts as far as people code them or hold to them, they must remain in the world of concepts and formulas. Now, if you and I can move away altogether from this, if I may use the word abomination, of concepts, of formulas, but examine whether there is such a reality, whether there is a oneness of life, whether there is an absolute, irrevocable, unapproachable reality by the mind, mind being thought, then we both of us are in a position of moving hesitantly with a mind that is not accepting or denying. So that we both of us are journeying, take moving together into a realm or into a field where Though we begin with thought, with reason, logic, where reason, logic, thought cannot possibly enter. If that is clear between us two, yes, sir. then it becomes very interesting to find out, to explore. into the question of what is truth, not according to K or to the Upanishads, or according to certain uh, saints, uh, so-called liberated people, uh, gurus and all the minor deities, or even uh, the Shankaras of the world, it will become very factual and very real if our minds can begin with the clarity of thought, pursue it logically to its end, then see if See, when thought ends, whether there is anything else. Yes, yes. Not according to the Upanishads and so on. No. Not starting with a conclusion. Not with the, But starting with the examination of what the Upanishads, the Gitas, the, mm, what the li- sacred literature mm. of the world says. Yes. Then discard them completely. That's right. And move. That's right. Right. First of all, the word is not the thing. The description is not the described. That must be clear between us. Right. Now, can thought ever capture or enter into the field of reality? Obviously not. Why do you say obviously not? Because... Wait, sir, go slow, in, because this quite Because reality contains the faculty of thinking, and therefore thinking cannot contain reality. Reality is, is a part. It uh, all thought depends, is a part of reality. It all depends what you call reality. 
That, which that is flag is flying there on that yes. hilltop. Yes. Hmm? Yes. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's real. That's real. Real in the sense it is, is a there. visual perception. You can go and touch it, you can, you can smell it, you can. And both of us see it. Yes. yes. And all the three of us see it. Yes. It is not just I see it and in bed. Correct. Therefore, it is not a personal perception. It is not an idea or a personal perception. Yeah. Therefore, it is not dependent on the person. Yeah, dependent on the person. Therefore, it is not part of the observer, as you would say. Yeah. Therefore, we must see together, the mm. three of us, yes. whether well, thought can enter into a field Or if there is a field which is the unknown, which is which can never be described into in words. So we have to go We have to find out whether thought can go beyond itself. Yes. Obviously can, not. <laughs> can thought naturally not with any motive, with any purpose, with any direction, with any volition, so can thought come to an end by itself? Yes. That's the first thing we'll have to investigate if we are going to find out if there is anything called Beyond the thought. real. Yes. Is that possible? Can your thought and her thought Naturally, easily, without any effort, subside. Subside. Obviously, it can, because it very often does. There are moments in the day when one is not thinking. Yes, but in terms of anything about something. But when thought ends, is there the real? You, have, you said just now that thought that does end. It happens often during the day, casually, when the mind isn't occupied with something or other. Mm. It ends. Is the ending mm. the beginning of the real? Or, or is does, the, is, has the real a beginning and an end? end? Or is it perhaps that thought is contained by that which was always real therefore, before it started and after it ended? In what, other words, the casual is not the ending of the thought, but the casual is the thought itself. And that's just what I want to point yes. out. That when we say it ends during the day... It's much better to say it happens. It happens it or whatever happens, it is. In it a limited may be, sort of way during may the day. Be, sorry, there are several things involved in it. It may be that your conscious mind is not aware that it is thinking. Sometimes it is and sometimes uh, it is not. Therefore, conscious mind may not be aware of it. Sometimes or it, it may be that the un unconscious is thinking hmm, of which the conscious is not aware. When we talk about thought ending, yes. it is the ending of the movement of, of itself, both at the conscious and the deeper levels of consciousness. Ah, this is interesting. So, are you saying this? If we say that thought ends, we must be quite sure that this is true. That's because we may think it ends, and this may only mean we are not aware of it. That's all. And if it really ends, it must end consciously right and through. unconsciously. Therefore, it is not enough to say, I am not aware of my thought. One must be able to say, there is no thought. Yes. So one must We be see there are two different things entirely. Entirely. The one thing is, I don't know I am thinking, and the other thing would be, I really am not, there really is no thinking at all. At all. Consciously or unconsciously. Yeah, that's why it right. is very important, because yes. When you use the word casual during the day, 
It may be the mind tired, the superficial mind tired, relaxed, quiet, and thinks it is the ending of thought. But whereas it, they are the deeper levels, deeper it levels, it can be moving, 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 of moving. Of course. One sees that even on a walk, when one is not preoccupied with a problem, thinking goes on all the time. So. Because one is recognizing the walk, one is indulging in soliloquy yes, with all the, the rest of trees it. and the grass and so on. So. so really the ending of thought is a much more difficult affair than much it would seem. Much more subtle, much more uh, profound. N- profound than merely stopping at, at a some... A conscious level. preoccupation. Yeah. Understood. So can thought end right through one's consciousness? And mustn't it end? for something new to be observed. Of course. Uh, go slowly, it go It must slowly. end if one will find out if there's something else. Yeah. So, That is why first, thought cannot find out if something else is. Our, so our first concern is to explore consciousness both at the superficial level hmm, and at the various different layers, yes. So that, right, we understand right through, yes. And therefore, can say, but I, there is a cessation of thought, yes, completely, yes. Thought, feeling, and so on, and right yes. through, yes. Cessation of the self. I don't want to use the word self yet here. Yes. I'm just keeping the word thought. Yes. yes, sir. Now, how is one to find out? Hmm. This is very interesting. How is one to be aware, not as the observer being aware of the thing observed, but be aware in the choiceless negative sense that the whole structure of consciousness is completely empty and still. Would you mind explaining, sir, why you say not as an observer being aware, but without an observer? Yeah. Because the observer is again thought. Yes. So we'll have to. When I said that, well, I mean, <coughs> I meant. <coughs> not observing as an outsider, Hmm. looking in. Hmm. When you look at a shop window, you are looking from the outside... At something else. At something else. At your dress, hat, whatever it is. Yes, there's this duality of me and it. it. Now, that is one way to observe. Yes. There is the other way to to observe, which is the head, the dress, the dhoti, or whatever it is, aware of itself. Yes, sir. This is very important. So you are asking, sir, can we observe to the greatest depth of our consciousness, not as apart from it, but as being it? Yes, as it. So. Can the mind observe itself and be aware of the conscious levels and the deeper levels? Right to the bottom. Right to the The depth of its being, so that it knows where conscious thinking ends. And the de- next layer begins, and so on. But, sir, isn't that knowing itself a conscious operation? No, I don't think so. I think it is. Conscious operation means I'm conscious of that tree there. Yes, volition is in, involved. You know, not only volition, I'm conscious. 
you are sitting there, yes. or she is sitting there. I am conscious, the trees, the hills, the flag. Hmm? Yes. What I am asking, sir, is how can the conscious ever I, examine the unconscious? I am going to go in. We are going to go in. Because while there is examination, it is always of the conscious. No, I am going to go. We are going to go into that. You can observe these many layers, or these several layers, under the microscope mm -hmm. of thought, and so there is the thought looking through the microscope at the object. Yes, commenting. Commenting, dissecting, recognizing, arguing, and all the rest of it. Cataloging. Which is the observer. Separate. Observing separate. the observed, which is the observer separate from the observed. Yes. That's one way of looking. And in that case, the looking is always conscious. Conscious. Yes. Whereas, when the observer is the observed, hmm. there is no consciousness as the observer. Yes. At this side, must, we must be very clear. It's a very subtle point, but I think. You've got it. I think that I'm following. Uh, right, then we can move then. So how am I how is the mind looking at itself? Is it looking as an observer, different from the observed? Or is it looking without, without that the difference. observer? And therefore there is only the observed. Without the separation. Mm. Perhaps well, at this stage, sir. You could tell us how we may be certain that the mind is looking at itself without that separation. Oh, I don't think you can be certain. Don't don't put it in terms of being certain, because then then you fall into the trap of absolutism. I don't know if you follow what I mean. If you say I must be certain, then again it is the observer. Observer. Well, that sir, means, like wait, look at it, look at it, go slowly, sir, go slowly, go slowly. That means you want to be sure. Mm. That means you want to be uh, sure and satisfied, uh, comforted, established, and feel that Again, there's a separation. Yes. Yeah. All that you say, how would one tentatively I'm not sure. proceed All that you can to observe <coughs> without the separation? All that you can say is, I'm going to look. Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch, I'm going to see, not see in order to be certain. Of course. It is, it is a good point, this. Beautiful point, sir. Because otherwise we get lost into something else. Yes. So, it, can the mind observe, do it, sir, now we are mm. doing it. Mm. Can the mind observe itself without the division? of the observer. And then he becomes aware, doesn't he, that this whole movement of different layers are so interrelated, they can never be separate from the conscious, unconscious, deeper. Exactly. This is so, sir. Yeah. Another so, thing, yes. So, there is, it is a, it's a river moving. It's only the man sitting on the bank that says, <coughs> that gives a name to the river, mm. and watches the water flowing outside himself. <coughs> but he feels himself the river. There is no naming. He is part of that movement. So, it's, can the mind be so aware, without any choice, of all the layers of consciousness? Because consciousness is the is thought. Consciousness is the content of thought, which is knowledge, the past, point, present, future. The point is that at whatever level 
when there is thought, there is an observer. And if one is aware of thought without an observer, there is nothing to be aware of. You not quite, sir. I don't because there is don't no come, thought where there come, isn't. Don't come to any conclusion yet. Don't come to any conclusion yet. Yes, sir. Don't ever come to any conclusion. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry. You follow, sir. That's and we get. Well, then yes. we fall back on the Upanishads and yes, the Gitas sir. and all the rest of it. What we are trying to find out is. Is there ending of thought if there is any content in consciousness and any content makes consciousness? I don't know if con- the content of consciousness is consciousness. Yes. The two are not separate. Yes. I can, there can be only a statement, not a verbal assertion or a, reali- a realization, when the content of consciousness has emptied itself completely, yes. and therefore the ending of thought is, is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. No, cannot. But when one knows the ending of thought, this again is thought. Of course, ah, that's what I said. Look. So can one ever know? No, see, I did not say, yes. therefore I say, can the content of consciousness, can consciousness empty itself of its content? Yes. And you say also that when consciousness is empty of its content, there is no more consciousness, because the consciousness is its content. Yes. We've reached quite a point. Now, how is the mind, which is made up of the content, which is its own content, which is content, which is the content, whether one or ten or a hundred, how is that mind to empty itself of all its content? The real question then is, how is mind to stop? Or one could say, how is content to stop? It's the same thing. No, 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 no. No, I want to put it differently. My my consciousness, your consciousness... Is content. Is the content. Yes, is thinking. Is is the the content of tradition, of the myth, of the character, the tendency, the the yes. memories, the know. The mind is what it thinks, as it were. Yes. Yeah. The, the, all the content. Yes, yes. The culture, the anti-culture. The thoughts, known and unknown. Yes. Now, can that be emptied ever? Mm. And if it cannot be emptied, then thought has no ending. Right, sir. Now, sir, we've come to a very important point. Yes, sir. You've said that the whole of our culture, all our memories, all our tendencies, all our character, all our temperament, all this is in the mind, all this is the mind, all this in fact is thought, all this is there whether we know it or not. That's right. It's either conscious in acting that's or right. it that's is right. unconscious. That's right. That's right. And you're saying, can all this somehow disappear? And if it disappears, there's no consciousness left, because this is consciousness. And you're saying also, if it cannot disappear, Thought well, then we've come to the end of the whole discussion. That's right. Until, the, and, until that's a fact, yes. as the fact, there is a hill. Yes. Until this is a fact, not hmm. a not conclusion. A, not a theory. Not a theory, not a conclusion. Hmm. As, as factual as you're sitting there. Yes. You follow? Yes, that, that thought has ended. That, that the content, the mind has emptied itself of its content. Therefore ended. Yes. See, see when what, this is so, so there see, will be no one to say this uh, is a We're fact. going to find out, we're going to find out. Don't come to any conclusion. We're going to find out. 
because that which recognizes... I don't know anything about it. <laughs> yes. We're going to find out. You see, this, they say, through control, mm. through discipline, mm. through subjugation, through imitation, this will through come. Through some out. system, of course. This oh, is therefore, ridiculous. Therefore, discard. Ridiculous. Let because you, who's going to discipline I mean, whom? I mean, that's too it's like the left hand trying that, to pull sir, away sir, the right that's hand. That's too immature, too thoughtless a remark. Indeed. Now this whole country is full of people it's who really run to all kinds of institutes for what they call training, and this is illusion. I have to, this you the most. You can run to dance. Or, when you see this, hmm. and when humanity is doing all that, you say. That is illusion. In other words, there is no training in thought to end thought. That is illusion. It is illusion. You can even mathematically. Of course, of course. Obviously, we don't have to. Yes. Thought will never end thought. Spaghetti so, machines will always make spaghetti. So, can the content of the mind empty itself? Now, just hold on a minute, sir. So they say, it can be done only slowly. This also is absurd. It's an evolutionary process. It's absurd. So, wait, sir, because look at it, don't call it absurd. See, the, see what the world is doing. Oh, yes. And go to a guru, he will teach you how to end it. Hmm. You follow? All that is process of evolution and that in that sense, evolution is illusion. Hmm. Hmm. Yet this comes back to what brings us back to what we said yesterday. There was a point when you didn't say what you're saying today, yes. and then at a certain time you did say what you're saying today. Therefore, there was an event in time which made the difference. Let and also, I think, that there was a process of human maturity, of maturity, because you did change during that time. You became more and more sharp. You became oh, more and more awake. You became more and more responsible, or whatever it was. Sir. The body you didn't was just wake up one morning and speak this way. No, no. There was a process which wasn't your doing, which wasn't the, the, the result of volition. One might say it's like the ripening of the pear on the tree, uh, whatever it was. It is natural. Yes. Now, let's come but You didn't bring it about uh, by no, no, manipulation no. of uh, the mind. Uh, so let's come back to this. Is this, can the mind, consciousness, empty itself? Otherwise, the idea of ending thought remains merely as a word and an idea. A fancy. Fancy. Yet another thought. Therefore, push that out. You see, sir? What we have done, we have discarded illusion. We have dis discredited the illusion of thought ending itself. Discredit? With, with, no, just with, don't with, trans. Yes. Do mm. two minutes. Yes. We have put aside the idea, put aside the illusion that time, guidance, control, suppression, imitation, following, is an illusion which, and therefore it can never empty the mind of its own content. That's right. We've, we done, have, that. That, We've done that. We've done that. That's See what, what that does to mm. the mind. Mm. You have discarded, the mind has discarded, the whole cultural illusion. No, the mind has discarded sadhana, as it is called. Sadhana, processes. Processes. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Discarded it. Discarded all processes of ending itself. Therefore, you have ended time. Yes. Now this go slowly, go slowly, go. Hmm? You have ended the element of time in the ending of thought. Yes. yes. Of course. Go slow. Look at it. Look at it. So the mind 
is now has now put aside the element of time as a process hmm, which will empty the mind you have di- the mind has put aside the whole idea of discipline you follow all yes. that yes obedience conformity uh, imitation authority all the rest of it is so what has Understood. happened what has happened to the mind that had actually discarded this tremendous weight of illusion it has understood no, therefore what has happened it's much clearer no no what so don't be too quick what has happened to the mind don't watch it sir that has discarded this weight of tradition this weight of tra- of becoming the, becoming miss guru leading no asari all that discarded put it completely away from you what has happened that is the content of the mind wait sir we have simply discarded what a recipe the, to we have end dis- the content no we have discarded the some of the content some of, of the, the mind. content some That's of all, the content yeah, so we have this content had all its connected do, past what, and among that was the idea of ending it through disciplines we've discarded that part no we have yes. discarded much more than that we have discarded authority the mind has discarded authority yes time time effort yes conformity yes now discarded it therefore the content has become is not so heavy yes so that's gone then what else is there in the in that con in the consciousness in, in consciousness temperament which go slowly history one would say all the tendencies that have always been there perhaps in modern language they would call this the subconscious And What so else is there, sir? Look at it quietly. Everything See. else which constitutes the self, sir, is still there. This is part of the me- part of the self. Yes, part of the self has been dealt with. D- dealt with. The self's recipes about itself have has been dealt has with. Has been operated. Yes. And the wound has no mark. No mark. Has left no mark. There's no wound. There's no wound. That's why has Now left no mark. Now what remains is the self. Now wait, sir. Don't translate the self. Please go slowly, not too quickly. it has left no mark therefore the mind has operated upon itself pu- cutting itself and leaving itself empty without any content no sir wait partly not partly yet. not part- yet i said part yes, sir yes sir go slowly sir then what is the other part is that not the major part Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Cuz desire is part of that. Desire says I must become. I must achieve. I want to empty the mind <laughs> so as to reach yes. heaven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So do you with the with the, with that operation you have also put aside desire. with that operation also you put out well, uh, so sorry sir we have put aside a particular recipe have we put aside the desire to <coughs> end the mind <coughs> i have no desire this is what we were speaking about since the beginning of this discussion <coughs> the ending of consciousness in all its layers i have no desire to end consciousness I only But we said that we were going to find out find what out? is beyond Yes, the we're mind. going to examine But if, Wait, unless sir. we have the desire to go ahead, we cannot examine. Not at all. Not at all. We said thought is very limited. Thought is never new. Yes. Thought is always old. Yes. It's only with the ending of thought something new can take place yes 
new flower, new uh, vision, new, new uh, vision. whatever, new perception. <coughs> perception, so on. In that there is no desire. Yes. But when I say, when I understanding I, instead. Yes. No, there is no understanding. You say that's a fact. Fact, yes. I don't have to understand the fact of that hill. It is no. there. Right. But when <coughs> mind says, I must empty myself of the content, then desire comes in. So we have in examining the, the content, we see how, extra, how much of the content is this, that is time, desire, process, achievement, yes, sir. all that. Yes, sir. In discarding that, we have very few things left in the mind. Are you saying, sir, that having discarded what you call time, we have also understood that time is the very element of the mind? That's right. And in discarding time as a recipe, We've discarded so much of the mind, I don't and we discover that the rest of the mind is also time. Yeah, I don't see why you call it a recipe. The recipe of getting rid of thought with a guru, with a system, with... So these we are said recipes. that. Discard. When We've you discarded discard that. As hurried, you discard all systems, all recipes, methods, yes. all formulas. That's what I meant by yeah. recipes. You systems. discard all that. Mm. Because that is so. Yes. Right? Mm. It's like the rain that washes away clay. Yes. In the same way, your mind has washed itself of that. Mm. Mm? Mm. Now, is there anything left? Everything else in the mind. Sir. What is that? All our problems. It's how it's how it's how it's how slowly, slowly. All our problems. All what our is recognition. Your, wait, go one word at a time. Problem. Hmm? Have you a problem when you have discarded achievement of time, when you have discarded authority, when you have discarded comparison, imitation, conformity? All that implies fear. Is there a, is there a thing called problem? You meet. Hmm. I'm. One no, meets the trouble that certain yes. people are creating at Oha. One meets it. Yes. It is not a problem. But just a minute. It may be that I am still upset about it. Ah! Then you have, it becomes a problem because you yes. want. It. Now, we have all we have discarded in this discussion. See? No, go slowly, sir. This all we have discarded in this discussion, sir, is methods of ending consciousness. But we have not thereby discarded everything we were going to end. We're going to find now, out. Then you say, what is it that we were going to end? Consciousness. Then you say, what is left in consciousness? I say, I'm worried about my wife. I'm worried about these people that are threatening me. Um, I'm worried because of this and that. Or I'm hopeful. Or I'm frightened. Or I'm lazy. Or but I'm lonely. Sir, I, these are all becomes problems, aren't they? That's right. I am saying, is there a problem? Problem in the sense. A thing that is not resolved, that is worrying you, mm. that is upsetting you, that filling you your filling your your consciousness. Consciousness, mm. a problem. Yes. Which means that you have to carry yes. it over the next day yes. emotionally. Yes. Yes. <coughs> yes. And so we yes. call all that Problems. problem. Yes. Sir. The I mind say, is a pro uh, problem. Is the mind, and the mind is problem. Don't don't yes. keep it simple. Mm. <coughs> is there a problem? Or is the, are there events which you are meeting? Yes, sir. When we meet but an wait, event... Wait, wait, wait. You are meeting. There are events, incidents, happenings which the mind meets. If the mind is not, as we say, has discarded it mm -hmm. completely, then you meet them. You may take time, you may take uh, mm -hmm. tomorrow, you, but you meet them without the sense of time. 
the sense of worry, the sense of fear, the sense of uh, saying it must be resolved in this way, that way, that way. You meet them, and yes, yes, see. Yes. Therefore, it's not a problem. That's what I want to get at. You meet it. I have to climb that hill. I climb the hill, yes, or sir. not? No, sir. All the things which we said were in consciousness when we started to speak are still there. They are still there. You named them yourself. The total remembrance of all culture, everything that's gone into me from the start, is still there. It has not disappeared because I have dealt with spurious ways of ending it. Uh, sir, that's what I said to you just now. Look at it, sir. This is quite interesting. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. To no, no, no. Quite right. Look at it, sir, this way. We said, can thought end? That's right. We said, thought may end at a certain level. Hmm. Hmm? Hmm. But the ending of thought must be right through. To the bottom. Hmm. That's right. Which means... And then we said, it cannot be ended by all these petty no, formulas no, which have been no, handed down. No, we've said... What are the contents of consciousness? Because without the the content make up the consciousness. That's right. If consciousness is the content, yes, sir. then in the emptying of that content, yes. consciousness has a quite a different meaning. Yes, sir. You go slowly. Now I we said what are the contents? Hmm. I d I'm i I'm not concerned at the moment the ending of thought. That's right. Sir. What is the content? What is the content? We said this. The whole of our culture. Wait, wait. We said time, hmm. process. Uh, what else would we say? We said uh, imitation, conformity, comparison. I'm keeping to that hmm. point. Hmm. And the guru, all that. Hmm. I say yes. I see that very clearly. Mind sees that very clearly, and has put it aside completely. Hmm. Then it is God. Its own remembrances, yes. its own uh, conditioning. knowledge, conditioning. Mm. Then I take the mind tackles that. Then that's where we are now. Now that the, that's where we are. Now, yes. I've discarded that. Now there are the contents of of memories, remembrances, tendencies, preferences. I'll keep keep. No, I don't want ten. I'm going to step by step this find out. Yes. Remembrances. Hmm? Yes. Which is remembrance being imagination. Yes. Habit. Contriving. Habit. Just keep it these three. Contriving. Mm -hmm. Imagining. Mm -hmm. Remembering. Yes. Not mm. keep those three. Yes. Sir. Remembering. I must remember. Mind must remember where the bathroom is. Mm -hmm. Mind must remember the road. Mind must remember the words to speak. Mind must remember the technology yes. it has acquired. Yes, all useful knowledge. Knowledge. Yes. It must. So, but knowledge becomes dangerous yes. or corrupt, yes. when desire says, I must use knowledge in this direction, in order... In order to, to, to guarantee to myself, myself, protect. Therefore, when I, when certain part of consciousness is removed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then I remember, I remember, mm -hmm. yes. Are you saying, sir, that knowledge is an impediment when it is used from a centre feeling itself that's to be me. That's all. That's right, sir. Therefore, I must have memory, re of course. remembrance. Hmm. The, I may not have imagination, hmm. unless I'm an artist or something of that it kind. It doesn't matter much if I have or not. Not. Therefore, I don't contrive. Say, well, hmm. I'm hmm. going to do this to that man, I'm going yes. to get this. I'm it it you, doesn't matter. No, not only it doesn't occur. I can't do it if there's no if the a centre called that's me is it. not using that's knowledge. That's it. It is only a centre using knowledge which makes imagination and contrary. So I have seen this very clearly. Yes. So that 
that is not to be discarded. I keep that. Keep what? Mind keeps knowledge. Knowledge. Without it, we, we, we perish. Therefore, see what has happened. I, mind has discarded the use of knowledge as self fulfillment, fulfillment, or as, as a means to self-aggrandizement, as a means of self habituation continuation, as a means of self-identification with my work, my picture, my. In know. other words, when. When the mind acts from the thought of self, then all knowledge is corrupted. So I've, learned, I've seen that. So are you saying, sir, that in our original consideration, which is to end thought in all its layers, we really don't try, we are not concerned with ending knowledge. No. We are only concerned with ending another kind of thought, which is the thought from a center called me. Ah, and it was this very same thought from a center called me, which was hanging on to all these systems and gurus and You've processes said that, in sir. time. So what has happened? Now, what are the other contents of the con of consciousness? The myths, the traditions. Again, they don't matter at all unless uh, I wield no, no, them no, from no, a me. No, 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 don't. They are no, not sir, myths. If just I... don't say, I have knowledge. Hmm. Knowledge uh, as as something which has been handed down to me, as hmm. books, as this or that. Yes, technical, technical knowledge. knowledge. But a myth is also part of knowledge because. Only if I believe in it. No, no. No, very. Don't sir, don't discard it so quickly. Go yes. slowly. Yes, sir. That is the myth. Yes. The Indian myth has held the people together. Yes, many of them, many myths. Many myths have held the people together. Hmm? And when there is no myth, as in this country for the time being, yes. people disrupt. Uh, That's right. Permissive and all the yes, disruption. A certain speak. sort of disorder. So, the myth which this mind has acquired because it was born in India, yes, uh, and with its caste system, with its you know, all the rest of it, is there any remnant of that myth which makes the mind behave? In a certain pattern, which brings about a certain stability in society. If there is that myth, then <coughs> consciousness must continue to produce thought according to that myth. That's right. Therefore, there must be discarding of that myth, yes. and yet have stability of conduct. Yes. See what I've mm. discussed what mm. we have yes, discussed. Yes, yes. Right? Yes. Right. Mm. So I dis myths are out. Out. <laughs> but technical knowledge is uh, yes. see what I've discussed. Stability of conduct is necessary. Therefore, the stability of conduct is not based on any myth, on any conditioning, but on facts. Which needs no remembrance. Ah, no, it needs remembrance of technical knowledge. I, I said that, fact. Which needs, yes. See what. Mm. So, what have I left? What has the mind left now? Myths, including myths, the tradition, the racial inheritance, the various stories, the personal, the, uh, the imagination inventing gods in order to behave yes, properly, survival and, so on, yes. uh, and the communication between the conscious and unconscious part of that myth, yes. and all that. All and that's discarded, so because have, there is no desire from a sense of So, so what's it, sir? So what have I left? What is the other content of consciousness? Only facts. Only facts. Mm. Ah, see the beauty of yes, it. Which is not conscious. Sir, just see the beauty of it. Only fact.
the mind hasn't got to think about the facts. Yeah, because if it I does, mean, sir, it... see, see what it has happened. Mind hasn't got to think about the fact. It observes the fact. Hmm. Observes the tree. Observes the woman. Observes hmm. the flag. Observes not my flag. You observes it. Yes, sir. Facts. Yes. Therefore, the consciousness is emptying, has emptied its, itself of all the content except the fact. Yes. Right. So, when fact is the only predominating factor, thought is non existent. Except when the fact has to be used. Yes, which again is fact. Yes, we say, look at that mountain. It's I a fact move. that you can plant a, a pole. See, this way sir, or other what way. has happened to my mind? Yes. I've emptied the, the mind has emptied itself of all its content except facts. Facts that you have hurt me, mm -hmm. but I'm not. Mm. You have hurt me. Mm. Full stop. Or. I don't, you ever hurt me, it's forgotten, but it's not important. Mm. Mm. So, the, as long as conscious, as long as we are deal, mind deals with facts, the content is the emotional ver verbiage, mm. the emotional garbage, garbage round the fact. Mm. It's very beautiful, sir. Perhaps this is what you meant when you said some time ago, I've been wondering what is the role of emotion, and I've come to the discovery that it has no role at all. So, sentiment. Now just see what has happened. Content has gone, mm. only fact remains. Mm. Ma, sir. Mm. So the mind is. Empty. Only with fact. There is no mind. Yes. Therefore, it is completely Clean. beyond thought. Yes. Thought he can use fact badly or. You mean such a mind can use f fact? Yes, can use fact. Only. Yes. Not fact in the direction of a country, for a country, yes, that perverts for fact. a family, for this, for that. Uh, thought. Yes. So we see what is the function of thought, mm. and when thought comes to an end, completely yes. right through. Yes. Now, which means, can has thought ended? Thought has ended. That's why I'm concerned. The thought has ended completely yes. right. Consciousness has ended. Mm. As the me with it all the yes, circles yes, round it. That's right. All the circles round it. Yes, yes. <laughs> then what is truth? That's what we are inquiring. What is there? What is there now? What is there now? Nothing. <laughs> And that's a fact. Yes. Yes. Nothing, therefore. Hmm? Mm. That's the truth. Yes. But you see how we translate nothing. Mm. Hmm? We translate nothing in all kinds of ways. Sunyata, the so, void, which one therefore imagines, which is not nothing, but which is ambition. Which nothing is emptiness. Yes, and emptiness means no me. No me. Nothing means space. Yes, it's, yes this is most beautiful. That is true. The mind that, is, that has no space can never find truth. A mind that is <coughs> not empty can never find the truth. Mm. Mind that is. A, not completely still, in which the operation of thought is non-existence, can never find the truth. Yes. This is the thing that, yes, that is the real thing. Yes, sir. Yes. 
and you listen to this, mm-hmm. or you read it. Someone mm-hmm. reads, mm-hmm. It. and I say I must have it. Uh, this is what has happened. Yes. And there comes the exploiters. Mm-hmm. Yes, you will have it. If you follow Do me, this. for a for a fee. Fee. Yes. Transcendental meditation. Yes. This meditation. That. Scandalous. Me- you see, sir. Peddling God. Peddling God. That is the man sees the truth of this completely. Mm-hmm. Is that true? Mm-hmm. Then he talks inevitably to yes. people, yes. and they say, "Quite right." That what becomes am I an, going to do to get that? Get that. That becomes an idea, <laughs> a formula, yes. a practice, yes. a guru, an authority. All kinds of perversions. <coughs> that is illusion. That is the world. Yes, that's right. And when the Upanishad says, when you say that's the illusion, that is illusion. Yes. Not the world isn't illusion. Mm-hmm. I mean, that the hills aren't an illusion. No, no. But when I have physical pain, mm-hmm. it's not an illusion. No, no, but no. it is an illusion, say, <coughs> I want to be free from it, and I hope to God mm-hmm. that I'll There's always. There's only one be illusion, free. it's me. And it's the workings of me. Remain with the fact. Yes. I have, I have lied, which is a fact. I have hurt, which is a fact. Mm. Mm. When I know I have hurt, I won't hurt. Yes, sir. and this is love. You follow? Yes. It is not. It is saying, "Oh, I hurt because." Mm. No, no, that's the self. So, would you say that love, that, love, see the beauty of itself? Love is the same as what you're saying. The love is yeah. the fact. Love is, love is in, a fact. To love in facts is to love. So when you are nothing, you love. That's right. Yeah. Mm. That means that you see. When, when you, you love, nothing, there will be order. That's it. It's so fits. It logically right. Oh, it's beautiful. Sir. It's as clear as mm. as crystal. What time is it? Thank you very much, sir. It is the continuation of yesterday's discussion. Do you remember you were asking yesterday on the walk is there nothing more than silence? And we said we'll talk about it this morning. There are several things involved in this. First, as long as there is an observer, there is recognition. When the observer says, I am silent, it is really not silence at all. And so, recognition as experience plays a great part. And when there is this silence of which, we, of which we have been speaking, there is no recognition taking place and therefore no experiencing silence. Silence when recognized as silence, then there is division. So as we were saying, can the mind empty itself of its content, therefore, which means the 
recognizing process. So for most of us, it seems, silence is a cessation of noise, the noise of chattering, a momentary absence of the me when you are strolling down a street, or when you are casually and absent-mindedly looking at those hills. And this, it seems, is not really the silence of which you are talking, talking about. Consciousness, as we said yesterday, is its content. And when it's content, when there is no content, consciousness has moved to a different dimension, which is really silence, in which there is not the recognition as the me, the observer, recognizing something. Though we also said, that silence can operate in knowledge. That is, the absence of the Self is silence. That silence can function in the field of knowledge. And, as you asked yesterday, is there something more in this silence. Or is it just a sense of complete vastness, silence, space and nothingness? You know, it's very difficult to answer this thing, this question, because one has noticed there is something immense in this silence, something that cannot be named, that cannot be verbalized. There is a movement in this silence. A movement that has no beginning and no end. A movement that is always new. New not in terms of old and new, it as it is a living, rootless thing. Real. Real. It is changing, it's renewing, it is it is got tremendous energy and all that. What is important, it seems, is not what is in this silence, but that the mind can empty itself of its content. I think that is really one of the greatest things if, if, we, if man could tackle that. Because the mind is the most extraordinary thing. It has got such immense capacities capabilities. When you see a destroyer, man of war, what thought has gone to it? What extraordinary capacity? 
the beauty and the brutality of it, or going to the moon. <coughs> if we could apply the same persistent, continuous inquiry into this question of what the content is and discover for ourselves the, that the content is the is consciousness, is the mind, and without any choice, without any effort, be aware of it. Then I think, then there is a possibility of the of totally. Emptying the mind of its own content, and therefore thought coming to an end right through. Thank you, sir. This is very important, and it clears up a great many points. I'd like to ask you one question here. You have often said no seeking, and you have often said no effort. And this throws a great many people into disarray. But now you have said a persistent attention to the mind itself, a persistent attention to its origin, a persistent attention to its contents. So there is work to be done, <laughs> and there is, there is something that can be done. Because well, many people who hear you feel that they are somehow suspended in midair. You cut out, you take away from them all effort, all action, all directed attention with regard to what we may call religion, and so they, they feel somehow suspended. But I think that what you've said now will give them more clarity. You've said to apply to one's mind, to apply to one's consciousness and its content, the same careful attention. deliberation, attention that went into the battleship. So there is, in fact, a great deal of work to oh, be done, sir. Oh, great deal of work, sir. This is what you many see, people don't understand. Work, they come away from a Krishnamurti talk, and they, they feel somehow absolutely uh, powerless. They don't yeah. know where to turn, they don't know what to do, because they say no sadhana, no following, no discipline, nothing to achieve, nothing to seek. And they say, and also they feel that their lives as they were before, are senseless and useless, so they are suspended between heaven and hell, having neither. Yes. And now you are showing them, in fact, that there is, as it were, a thread which leads, not in time, but which is the secret to some other dimension. And this thread is the observation of the mind itself, so that one understands how it can be emptied. You see, sir, we equate effort with work. And you're saying there is a work which is not effort. Uh, that's all. This is very important, sir. There you is work said this without before. effort. There is work to be done. Oh, tremendous work. But there's no effort. effort. We must not, we cannot, if we understand, we cannot follow sadhana, disciplines and so on. But we can inquire into ourselves. So there is inquiry. There is. Inquiry is different from seeking. Inquiry is different from effort, from seeking, from achievement. But this is very important. Seeking comes from a me. Of course. Inquiry is in its very essence without a me. This is very important. So, so three very important things have arisen. When you say the ending of the content of consciousness, therefore the ending of consciousness, you are not saying some vague oblivion. No. On the contrary, you are saying the beginning of life, the beginning of what is real. That's right. The second thing you are saying is that just silence is not the end of the story, it's the beginning of the story. Because in that silence there is finally the discovery of a movement for which there can be no words. That's right. And you're saying, thirdly, that there is work to be done to come upon this silence and to understand totally the anatomy of the me and of the mind and of thinking. That's right, sir. And these are three very great gifts right. for which we all thank you, sir.